Our next guest is widely regarded as one of the most important voices of African literature, and his new novel, Foreign Gods, Inc., is generating tons of buzz. That's right, and he's here to discuss his life and his work, author and professor of Africana Studies at Brown University, O.K. Ndebe. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. So let's talk about your new novel, Foreign Gods, Inc. Yes. It centers around a man named E.K., highly educated, but ends up driving a cab in New York City. He just so happens to be an alcoholic and a gambler. Tell us more <laughs> about this complicated character. Well, E.K. Uzondo, who mm -hmm. is um, the protagonist of my novel, um, has been to one of the most prestigious colleges in America, Amherst College. Mm -hmm. And E.K. expected that on, upon graduation with a degree in economics, he's going to get a job on Wall Street or something. But then he finds that uh, the absence of a green card stands in the way. And once he gets his green card, he finds out that his accent, which is particularly strong, excludes him from the kinds of jobs that he expects to get. So he's stuck as a cab driver for about 13 years, and then he reads um, a magazine, much like the New, York, the New York magazine, and finds that there's a gallery in New York City that buys and sells statues and, of gods and mm -hmm. sacred, sacred objects. Mm -hmm. And he decides to return to Nigeria, to his hometown, actually, to steal what used to be the god of war, to sell it to this gallery. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you come up with the concept for this novel? When did you have that spark that said, this is what I want to write about next? Oh, that's in, an interesting question. It actually came uh, from a conversation with a cousin of mine who told me that a deity, the statue of a deity near my hometown, had gone missing. Hmm. And as a writer, I was intrigued. I said, what could have happened exactly. to this statue? And uh, if you're a writer, you want to account for things by making up a story <laughs> where uh, there's a mystery. And so I began to write and said, what if there's a gallery somewhere in the world? Um, I thought to set it in New York, in London, but ended up settling for New York City uh, to have this gallery called Foreign Guards, Inc., that buys and sells guards. Mm, well, you know, it's not really uncommon to find many immigrants that are highly educated driving cabs around New York. We always get them all the time. So how did you do the research for this character? Did you just drive around a few cabs? No, well, I didn't have to do much research, really. Mm -hmm. um, I do know uh, several friends who have PhDs and are cab drivers, you know. And it is not, all, it's not a particularly African problem either. Uh, in fact, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was on my way to London. Mm -hmm. And the cab driver who drove me to the airport uh, happened to be Lebanese. And in talking to him, I found out that he had a first degree in mathematics, and then he had a law degree in Lebanon. And he came mm -hmm. here, and he couldn't get a job. So he's uh, stuck as a cab driver as well. Mm -hmm. And so having known people like that, I, I thought that this would be uh, a perfect protagonist for the novel. Wow. Well, like your character, E.K., you also have an MBA, and you also teach at Brown University. So how did you make that leap from business to liberal arts? I actually have an MFA, which MFA? is a Master's in Fine Art in mm. Fiction. So, no, I, I, my first uh, diploma is in business, but mm -hmm. um, even when I was in Nigeria uh, studying um, uh, business for my first uh, degree, I always knew that I wanted to be a writer. So when mm -hmm. I came to this country uh, to edit an international magazine called African Commentary, mm -hmm. um, once that magazine uh, went defunct, um, I went to graduate school to study fiction, and then I ultimately did, did a PhD in literature. So I always knew that I wanted to be a writer. When did you first realize that you wanted a life in letters? You say you always wanted to be a writer, yeah. but when did you first realize it? And what did your family and peers make of that decision? Good. Let's take the second question first. Okay, let's do um, that. My parents were not impressed. Um, <laughs> I, I come from a country where people are more interested in professions. They, they want you to be a medical doctor, an engineer, an accountant, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And here I was in high school reading a ton of novels, and my parents were really, really worried for me. And they said, your elder brother is studying hard, he's going to be a doctor, and what are you going to do with all these novels? Um, but the moment I read uh, Achebe's Things Fall Apart mm -hmm. uh, in high school and saw people like me reflected in a novel. I said, if I could ever do this, I want to be a writer. Initially, I didn't think I was up to it. I felt I was a, a journalist, which is where I started. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I could uh, make the transition to fiction writing until I came to this country. 
-hmm. And that's when you made the leap. And I actually became a writer by telling a lie. Oh, yes. really? Yes. What, what was lie? that lie? Do tell. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay. Well, the magazine that I was editing, African Commentary, which was published by Chino Achebe, went under. And so I was, I had no options. And so one day I met um, John Edgar Wideman, who was one of our columnists and one of the most extraordinary American writers, really. So he said to me, so what are you planning to do next? I said, I don't know. And he said to me, you're working on a novel, right? Mm. And the way he asked the question, there was only one answer. I said, yes. <laughs> so he said to me, OK, get me about 20 pages of it, and let's see if we can get you into UMass, Amherst, to study. So I spent that weekend rushing through what became my first novel, the mm. first 20 pages. And I gave it to him, and he said, wow, this is great. So I told a lie, and I had to live up to it. Oh my goodness, that's a that's, great yeah. story. <laughs> I you. love that. Yeah. <laughs> so one of your biggest um, mentors is Chinua Achebe, or was yes. Chinua Achebe, yes. and he's one of the greatest writers the world has ever known, Nigeria has known. How did he influence you as a writer, and how did he impact your career? Well, Achebe um, was important mm. for several generations of African writers just by the power of his personal example. And then I was lucky to meet him uh, personally. Actually, the last year, I, uh, the year I graduated from college in Nigeria, I was hired by a magazine. Um, before I resumed work, uh, through a woman from Achebe's hometown, I got to meet Achebe. And Achebe said he would give me an interview anytime I wanted. So when I reported at, uh, uh, at my desk, I told my editor that I had met Achebe who would give me an interview. And so he became my first assignment uh, mm. to do an interview with him and write a cover story on that, based on that interview. My goodness. Mm. And then, so he brought me to this country subsequently. Uh, he was teaching um, at UMass uh, when he met a number of other African scholars. And they decided to set up an international magazine called African Commentary. And Achebe told him that he knew the person to be the founding editor. And he invited me to, from Nigeria to come and edit the magazine. Wow. Yeah. And you've been writing actually a great deal about the war that happened in your homeland when you were only seven years old. Yes. Now, why have you chosen to focus so much on that period of your life? And how did it affect your life? Well, when you are seven um, and your country disintegrates into war, mm. it's the most important memory, really, that you carry. Uh, throughout your life. So in a lot of ways, in conscious as well as unconscious ways, the war is a central memory uh, in my life. As a result of the war, my family was um, uh, uh, had to relocate from the northern part of the country where we lived at, at the time, where my mother was a school teacher and my father was a postal clerk. And we had to go to the southeastern part of the country where my parents were from originally. I lost Hausa which was uh, the language that I spoke uh, in, in that place. And, uh, but I have rich memories. But the memories that were grim, of people dying of starvation, of uh, just the grimness of life, you know, when people had to run out of their homes at any hour of the day because there were air raids, you know, uh, um, uh, aircraft strafing. Yeah. Uh, and, that and kind so, of experience precisely was... was uh, it didn't quite leave me traumatized, you know, but it's, it's the most important memory in my, that I have. And mm. nearly two million people died during that period. Absolutely. And a number of them starved. And yes. You had to subsist for yes. a great deal of time on food like rats and lizards we and things to of that lizards, nature. We had to yeah. Mm. In fact, there were, uh, there, you know, you had to savor li mm. lizards, you know, they were a treat if you found some. Uh, one of my memories, uh, clear, clearest memories, was one day when my parents went with me to a relief, um, a place where food was distributed. And as we stood in line, we saw a man topple and collapse to the ground. I suspect the man died. And so my parents were trying to shield me from seeing this. Hmm. And of course, as a child, I remember so, sort of trying to look around them so that I'll see what was going on. So those things stay with you. Hmm. My goodness. My wow. goodness, powerful. So let's shift gears and talk about what's next for you. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm working on two things. I'm working on uh, what I call not a memoir as much as it is uh, several memoir essays. Um, I've had a very interesting life in America. Ten days after I came to this country, I was arrested for bank robbery. Uh, somebody had robbed the bank, and the police felt that I fit the description. 
Um, so I'm That's working... a way to welcome you to <laughs> yes, our shores, indeed. right? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so I'm working on a, on a book which I call Going Dutch and Other American Misadventures. So that's mm. one. Uh, the other thing that I'm working on is another novel called um, Return Flight that features, again, another immigrant who goes back to Nigeria to explore the possibility of returning permanently, mm -hmm. but he runs in, into some terrible experience and has to, uh, has to fly back quickly to America. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, re-examine the immigrant experience uh, in mm -hmm. this new novel. Wow, that's some exciting stuff. I can't wait to read that one about the bank robbery. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like it's going to be a bestseller. Yes, I hope so. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much for being here, well, and congratulations thank again. Thank you very Foreign much God's for inviting Inc. me. Thank yes, you. It's a delight. And you're watching Arise Entertainment 360.